I had a pretty good conversation this morning with somebody who wasn't, you know, apparently, uh, you know, a big time Trump supporter until uh, just today. Uh, this guy was, uh, his name was Brad, and yes, he was uh, African American also too, and I can relate to that because, of course, I'm a minority as well, I'm Hispanic, and I've lived in a mostly African American community for all of my life, so I would understand that. Uh, he came up to me and said, hey, I, I, can, I, can I talk to you for a second? I said, yeah, sure. I mean, I don't know what he's you know, about to talk to me about. But he comes up to me and says, you know what? I got I to gotta give you guys credit because you've been coming into this university for months and months on end with your Make America Great Again cap. And, you know, I just wanted to see, you know, what the reaction is you get from people or stuff like that. And I also want to apologize to you. That's what he said. I'm like, well, why do you need to apologize for me? Because he says, well, I, th I thought that you guys... Oh, hated me, and I was thinking like, oh, do these are these guys racist? Do they hate me? I don't know why. I mean, what's what's going on? And then he began to realize, especially with all the riots going on, because that's the big thing. The riots going on to all you rioters, you think you're doing something? What you're doing is turning away a lot of moderate people who would otherwise be supporting the Democrats and now supporting Trump and are now supporting our guy. And he's the guy for everybody. So he's. Did, uh, back to what this guy Brad was t telling me about, he says that you know the more that I think about it, and the more that I see this going on, you know I just I just want to see you know all these supporters. I want to see what they said. And I told him like, and he, he asked me, he's like, why is it that I support Trump? Well, I told him, well, I I've, I've always been a big fan of Trump ever since I was a uh, you know a little kid watching The Apprentice, and he's been a big inspiration to me. And when he you know when he started to run. I thought it was well, one of the greatest things to ever to ever happen, and I thought it would be great. And the media never called him racist or sexist or anything like that until he started running. So for 40 years, nothing has ever happened until he started to run against the Democrats. And then, you know, he started to figure out, and then we talked a little bit, and I was surprised that he actually knew about George Soros also, too. So that's, that's finally something that's coming out, because it really needs to come out. So... We had a you know a deeper conversation also too as well about a lot more things as well, and uh, you know he he started to come and he said you know I was I wasn't a Trump supporter also too as well I actually voted for Jill Stein because I didn't like Hillary Clinton because she was you know absolutely crooked she was uh, corrupt and what she's done to minority communities has been terrible and you know I agree with him it's like absolutely you you know what you know the terrible things that she's done is is completely awful what she did to Haiti what she did to. Uh, other countries in, uh, in Africa is, is completely terrible, and that's why he didn't vote for her. And he voted for Jill Stein instead, which is, you know, uh, that's it. I, I would say a more moral choice. Uh, definitely wasn't the one who was going to win, but it was a moral choice if you wanted to vote and voted a uh, third party. I mean, you're still exercising your right to vote. That's fine. But, you know, he, he began to see, you know, what's really going on, and especially the media, of how crooked and deceptive the media has been and putting out this false narrative about racist, sexist, homophobic, this and this and this. And none of us are all that. Like, look, we're, you know. And he, he got into a whole Christian thing also, too, as well, because this guy's also a uh, very devout Christian, from what I could tell, and also a very devout Catholic Christian also, too, as well. So we got, you know, on level ground with that also, too, as well. So he began to understand more of why us as Trump supporters, people who the media would otherwise put out as racist, sexist, homophobic, bigots, and all that, we're really not. So the reality is coming out, and as what I'm seeing here, this is a brand new day that we're coming into America. This is, you know, we're coming into some dark times, especially for all the protests, but outside of it, we're going to see some bright days for everybody, no matter who you are, white, black, Hispanic, whatever, as long as you're American, you agree with American values, it's going to be a great day and a great eight years for everybody. Signing off. Hey guys, so it has been five days since Donald J. Trump was elected president of the United States and people are losing their shit. I mean, I'm not losing my shit, but I was definitely shocked and not shocked in the way that most people are shocked right now, which is, oh my God, I can't believe he won. It's more of like, he had everything going against him and he won. And now that the dark cloud of this election cycle is finally over, I feel like I've been able to sit back, reflect, look at everything that's happened, and I don't know why I was shocked. Here's why Trump won and why you should have saw it coming. 
So first of all, the theme of the entire election on both sides was changed. Hillary Clinton was the most unelectable person the left could have possibly produced because she was the antithesis of the direction that the country is and should be moving toward. Hillary Clinton was the quintessential establishment candidate. I mean, she was the manifestation, the representation of everything that America is getting sick of, which is corporate interests dictating policy. So there were two people during this entire election cycle which incited you know, new, really passionate movements mobilized Americans, and that was Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump. So when the DNC rigged the primary against Bernie Sanders, which we have evidence of through WikiLeaks, if you haven't read WikiLeaks, it's probably another reason why you're shocked that this happened. He then conceded to her and then went on to campaign for her. He split the movement that he had created in half. So many people suddenly became really disenfranchised and people didn't want to vote for Hillary. It also made Bernie look like a joke because she stood for everything he was against, but he still went on to campaign for her. In my opinion, that split that the DNC caused early on in the primary really decided Trump's victory. And regardless of what you think of Trump's movement, it never lost its momentum, it never lost its vigor in the same way that Bernie's did. Because whether you like Trump's change or not, he offered change. Hillary Clinton did not offer change. Hillary Clinton offered pretty much just, I'm a woman, and don't vote for this guy, look at this doofus, look at Trump over here, you gotta vote for me, look at Trump, he's racist. And it just wasn't enough. I mean, Hillary's been involved in shady shit for longer than I've been alive, and people just didn't want to vote for that. For every, you know, mean thing that Trump said, for every insensitive thing he said, for every crass thing that he said, there was something tangible you could point to coming from the Clinton side, something that actually harmed the American people beyond just hurting their feelings. I mean, there was Benghazi, there was the email scandal, there was illegally accepting millions of dollars from foreign countries to the Clinton Foundation, lying to the FBI. So in the days after this crazy election, I see a lot of people lying to themselves lying to themselves that racists elected Donald Trump. And this truly shows that people are still not getting it. Shouting out all the buzzwords, Islamophobic, racist, xenophobic, homophobic, transphobic, all election cycle didn't get her elected. People didn't take it seriously then and they're not now. So yes, the majority of white people did vote for Donald Trump, but do you know who they voted for in the last two elections? They elected and then re-elected a black president. You really think they suddenly became racist when Trump stepped on the scene. In fact, there was only a 1% increase in white voters for Trump than Romney had in 2012. The white vote was also not enough to give him the win. The dirty little secret is that Trump won because of minorities. The black vote was up 7%, Hispanic up 8%, and Asian up 11%. So the candidate that was painted as, you know, gonna gas all the minorities and so racist, one because of minorities. The reason why this election is so amazing is that Trump had everything going against him. He had the entire establishment going against him. He had every celebrity endorsement going against him. He had the sitting president campaigning against him. The entire mainstream old media that Hillary had in her pocket the entire time, which is why Trump's pussy tape got way more coverage than anything ever from WikiLeaks. There's even a huge part of the GOP that hated Trump, all the never Trumpers. But obviously what he didn't have going against him was the people. The people have spoken, not Katy Perry, not Beyonce, not the pollsters, not the pundits, the people spoke. And on top of all that, I think people got really fucking tired of being told what to do. To shut the fuck up, vote for Hillary because you don't want Trump. You have to admit that any TV channel you turned on, minus maybe Fox News, it was a never ending bash Trump show. Every celebrity was forcing it down your throat and people realized, I don't give a fuck what Beyonce says, what Katy Perry says, what Miley Cyrus says. These people don't represent me. These people don't have the same interests as me. And I'm not going to vote for someone just because they paid millions of dollars to all these celebrities to tell me that they're better. I think people were really sick of the direction the left was going in, which is, you know, shouting just an endless stream of buzzwords, racist, Islamophobe, xenophobe, over simple dissenting opinions. And I think that also pushed a lot of people to vote Trump. Because they watched as everyone around them and every TV channel tried their best to paint him as a bigot and they realized people actually do this to me too. That actually is what's happening now is that people are getting called horrible things for simple disagreements. So I'm sure you're wondering at this point who I supported and if I'm happy or unhappy with the win and I am and was a skeptical, at times unenthusiastic, Trump supporter. And if you would have told me at the beginning of his campaign that I would be open to Trump, I would have left you out of the room. And throughout the whole way, even as I was coming to grips with supporting Trump, I never was under some illusion that he was going to be like the most amazing president ever. I hope he is. I hope for everyone's sake he is, but I never really thought that. It was simply that I knew too much about Hillary Clinton. I took the time to read WikiLeaks and I took the time to look into what a Clinton presidency would mean and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it.
And I've been saying this for a while. I think that in a lot of ways, Trump is unpredictable and a bit of a wild card. But at the same time, I think the issue here was Clinton was highly predictable. And that's what was scary. And the bitch cheated the entire way, rigging the primary against Bernie, getting leaked questions for the debate against Trump. I mean, I'm not going to vote for a cheater. So where are we at now? people are losing their minds. And although I have some grievances with him and his VP pick, I don't think he's the boogeyman that he was painted to be. I think that there was a lot of emotional manipulation on part of the media this entire election cycle. And so people are freaking out, but they genuinely believe that their entire family is about to be deported and the gays are going to be put in internment camps. Calm down, please. I mean, all this extra shit, vandalizing, rioting, calling for his assassination, assaulting people, Ending friendships, lifelong friendships over this election, it makes us look like losers. It makes us look like people who speak of democracy as a platitude rather than something we value. It's time to put the fight aside, accept the fact that Donald Trump will be the 45th president of the United States and come together as Americans. If he really does turn out to be literally Hitler, you guys know I will be there fighting him with you because Lord knows I will be the first one in the damn oven. But until then, let's just take a breather.